Hey, live on Pat Soundbites, Unplugged Podcast, in conjunction with WBXO Classic Rock Radio. Man, it is cool. It is such an honor to have this cat on our show today in the house. I mean, I'm like, I know this guy just as a drummer for Collective Soul, but I do my homework and research. Drummer for Collective Soul, yeah, but he's also an author. He's an educator. He's an inventor. I mean, <laughs> he's invented his own drumsticks. I'm like, <laughs> I'm shaking my head. He's got a world record. <laughs> I'm like, where the hell have I been? But we'll get into all of that. It's great to have my friend. I love this band. I love all these guys. Mr. Johnny Rab out in Indianapolis, Indiana. How are you, my friend? Pat, that was quite an introduction, buddy. I'm great. Thank you. How are you doing? I, I look, I can't get the smile off my face. We oh, just, I mean, I'm, you got me smiling. That's great. We were, we were just talking. Well, let me just ask you and the family, Bridget, everybody okay dealing with this whole COVID thing? Knock on wood, everybody's healthy and safe and all Thank that. You. We're doing great. We got back from New York to three weeks ago and had a great time there, a little vacation for the kids, a little TV thing I got to do. We are totally healthy and let's hope the COVID thing is on its way. I don't mean this ignorantly, but on its way down, I can't say out. You know what I mean? Let's hope it. We need to get back on the road and everyone needs to come out. We got to get people intermingling again. And so, yeah, we're good. No, excellent. Great to hear. And and my love for Penny and Quincy. <laughs> love the dogs. Yeah. You met, yep. you know, so we'll jump, we'll jump the gun before I talk about raccoon catcher and taking care of dad, which is, which is awesome. Uh, you talked, you just talked about New York city and I, I was almost going to reach out to you to say, man, you're in my backyard. Maybe man. we could hook up for lunch, but congratulations. What a great gig. If you didn't see it, Johnny was a special guest drummer on Seth Meyers uh, show and the uh, HG band. And uh, how cool was that? How did that, if you got a second to explain, um, did they reach out to you? Did you have to say, hey, I'm interested to uh, get on? Because I know I saw Brooke Colucci from Plush, I think the yeah. week before. So I knew yeah. there was like uh, the, the, the normal drummer, who well, I'm not quite sure that is, was out. So they're looking for replacement. So talk to me about how that gig went. You look like you had a great time down at Rockefeller Center in New York. It was awesome. I've been to New York City many times, but this was fascinating to me because I've never been in the heart of that area to be able to check out Saturday Night Live and 30 Rock and all the studios in there. I didn't realize how closely knit they were on the same floors, etc. I mean, I, I had, uh, who did I have? Al Roker get his COVID test right in front of me. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know? uh, so in a nutshell, it was super fun. It was four days and get in there about 11.30, rehearse with the AG band, and then get in there and do like a run through. It was very easy going once I, got, once I got the hang of it. Now, don't get me wrong. I think it takes some, you got to be attentive. And their whole band is so nice and cool and professional. Uh, Eric Lederman was actually the person that uh, allowed me to be on there, producer. And I never tell a fib. I definitely reached out to him. Um, through following him on Instagram and seeing the other drummers have this special uh, spot on there. I was like, man, that looks really exciting. And I had a few colleagues that had done it. And I reached out and I said, how do you, how did you get involved in that? That looks so fun. And you were asking who the regular drummer is. It's uh, Fred Armisen, the comedian. And actor oh, Fred from... Armisen. Yes. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Saturday Night Live. I, yeah. Yeah. So Pat, I've never met Fred in person, but I'm a big fan of Fred. Uh, and I love what he's doing with the drumming community and him and Eric created this, thing where Fred, I believe, where Fred started having a lot more acting and was not able to be there full time. So since then, they've had like 200 and some odd drummers fill in and it's created this kind of feather in the cap drum chair. And it's been great. Er earlier, a couple months ago, Todd Sukerman was on there. I have like a lot of my Abel Abora. I did Jr. see Todd. Yeah. Yeah. Abe Jr. was on there. A bunch of my buddies were on there. Um, it's just this rotating chair that it's almost like this kind of like bucket list little gig so it was super fun all the guys in the in the band um were just fantastic i mean we had eli's band leader seth sid and uh james was also in on guitar for a little bit it was i could totally love doing that gig of course i'm looking forward to hitting it with collective soul but it just showed me a different side and uh, i've done tv before but this was i just 
freaking loved it following Steve, the stage manager and, and that whole crew, Yeji, and it was just really well taken care of. I don't give them shout outs. I can't help it. Um, and I did get to meet Seth briefly and he was very kind and saying, thanks for coming. And, uh, it was just an honor. I want to do it again if I can. It was great. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be a great out, uh, outlet to doing something. You know, it's great that yeah, uh, look, I, we, I love Collector Soul. I love what you do, and I love the guys. But to do something a little bit different with different musicians, it's only going to make you a better drummer, I would think. Whether whatever genre it was or whatever songs you had to learn, you know, like you said, live, well, live, you know, recorded TV, but still TV. It's yep. a whole different setup. It's got to, you know, it, it's like, you know, checking on the uh, resume. It's got to be really cool. So that's that's awesome. Well, there you go. That answered that. Um, yeah. Super I, fun. I, I'm reading all about you, Johnny. And I'm like, you know, invented your own drumstick company. I mean, <laughs> how cool is that? What? I mean, I got, what do I got here? Michael Cardelloni, uh, Leonard oh, Skinner. Michael, I love got, what does he have? Pro Mark. Yeah. Um, Michael, I donated. Michael was raising money for the Red Cross, or and nice. um, I said I gotta, I gotta uh, help out any way I can. And Michael lives in New York City, and I said I'm all in, and uh, you know any way I can help uh, our people. Do you, Johnny? I, and I'm good friends with Carmine and Peace. Yes, Carmine. and Vinny Apathy. You know, I don't know what these guys drive me crazy with their name. And Carmine always plays with the fat end, and he always says okay. you get a heavier sound. And I know I watch your videos and you're always doing drum lessons and showing, you know, freehand and this and that. I'm not a drummer. I wish I was or, or a, mu but, a musician. Um, do you, how, is, does it make that much of a difference when you play with the side end of the stick? There is. Yeah, there is a difference. More, more wood is hitting the actual drum and the rim of the drum. So it's a heavier, more solid piece of material going against the drum. So Carmine's approach is definitely legit for that backbeat. Sometimes I'll do that, but I kind of do it, stick to the, the tip end, but like totally makes sense on like we do what's called it. My dog, we're going to bear with my dog, folks. Anyway, the cross stick on the rim, you can hear that and it, it, it creates a solid sound on the, on the snare drum for that. And so it's a pretty big difference. Like he's pretty heavy hitting there. And I'm, Carmine was my first book that I ever, you know, trained out of actually as a kid. Realistic Rock it was a great book. Excellent. So, what made okay. you decide to, like you said, you know, I'm going to do my own drumstick company. Were you not happy with what was out there? And you said, you know, I just got, I'm on my own feel. It was, uh, and dude, I'm going to change the scenery. I don't even care, Pat. I'm going to let my dog out. Uh, it was a, it was a, uh, a, a must for me. I was working at Red Lobster, which is, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the seafood lover restaurant and you, uh, I worked there for like, on and off for four to five years because in Nashville, Tennessee, I had to keep, you know, working. So I, I was, I just, no shame. I went in there and did like the bartending waiter gig. And while I was in there, I was frustrated because I wanted to tour. I wanted to get on tour and it was on and off. I was playing with Tanya Tucker and she just kept, I love her to death, but she kept like kind of changing her mind, you know, on, well, I'll try another drum route. And the Red Lobster was like where I got so frustrated on a napkin, I just drew out this design of a stick that had teeth in it and it could uh, scrape and make different you know, sound effects. That's called the rhythm saw. And it, uh, in fact, it's right here. Here it is. It, it's uh, the original one was made in Nashville by a guy on like a hand, Handmade lathe. So, oh, nice. So, yeah, you see how it's got the. Yeah. Yeah, can, very cool. And there's so much stuff you can do. So, that was that stick. And then from there, it, it ballooned up into a full company and it got very serious. And uh, we're like battling for number two spot in the world. Excellent. Um, yeah. Nice. You know, now, unfortunately, it's relaunched. Excuse me, fortunately it relaunched, but unfortunately it was sold from underneath me. I made a bad business deal at like age 25 and didn't know that I was a minority shareholder. And it took me years to get the patent back. So this, this stick was is patented. So I got the patent back from, uh, but it run to better things now. Like Collective Soul couldn't have been a, just a more perfect blessing for me. And then now I'm able to try to do the stick thing again on my own with my partner, Troy, in the stick business. And 
it's still Johnny Rap drumsticks, and we're just getting ready to get the sticks relaunched. I've been playing them for the past four or five years with Collective Soul, so they're, they're road tested. I'm all excited about that. So yeah, I got to get a pair yeah. of that, man. I got to yeah. catch up to you to have a pair of that. That's I'll cool. Say, I'll say. T- tell me, tell me about the NU80, the Ultimate 80s. Uh, uh, music show there experience. Yeah. I mean, you're like, what? <laughs> I love it. You're keeping yourself busy. That's all cool. Talk to me about yeah. that. Well, thanks for making me feel good, Pat, because like sometimes I'm like, man, am I lazy? So maybe you're reminding me that maybe I'm not. Maybe I just take breaks. No, sometimes. you're not lazy, dude. I watch you on Instagram and you're always doing something, which I enjoy. Well, thank you. Because there are days like today before we talk where I'm like, I'm just going to chill out and take a nap anyway (laughs) (laughs) um the 80s thing has always been a big love for mine uh and the lead singer paul souza and the other guys nate and joe but like paul and i met and discussed you know like look we're not trying to get signed in an original act right now I'm, i'm obviously in collective soul love that that's my main focus very honored to be in there as you know but I'm like, what can we do when we're off the road that would be fun and become a business? So the goal with NU80 is to get it to be like in a more of a casino and larger venue theater show, like literally show, production, lights, video, where you come to a show and you go, man, those guys didn't only play well. The show was like a, a, a an experience. So for the past, since COVID, we've been working on it. Oh, like a Rock of Ages, not to cut you out, but like a Rock of Ages on Broadway or the Rock uh, Vault going to Vegas. If you like the 80s, you want to see a show, it's all of it. That's it. And we do more of the power pop synth-driven music of the 80s. Flock of Seagulls, some of the Cure, Duran Duran, the Cars. So more of the, uh, we we have a 90-minute show. We're getting ready to debut and have, you know, the full production shown um, here in Indy on June 29th. Pretty excited about it. We have a, uh, our little EP that's out that is originals called Vaccine. We kind of came up with that title. It's obvious, I know, but we really came up with it right when 2020 was like getting shut down. And we're like, dude, this should, it's a little arrogant, but we're like, this should be the title, Vaccine, this music. Let's let the music be the vaccine. Exactly. No matter what, yeah, you know what I mean? No matter what people's views are on getting one or not, just right. let's, let, let's let the music be the vaccine. That's what was our kind of, so- it's really exciting, and um, if you want to check it out, and it's the same a shameless plug, but nu80band.com, just to see, because there's some sound bites on there, no pun intended, Pat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and let's just talk real quick about how awesome Jesse Triplett is. There we go. Oh, uh, yeah, you got to throw <laughs> Well, for anyway. I know for our listeners, we all love the hat the birthday boy. Yeah. Uh, one of our, our favorite lead guitarists who scares the crap out of Johnny when Johnny least expected walking out of a bar or after a late night, jumps out of a tree just to see Johnny's reaction. And I did talk to Jesse earlier because I said, hey, birthday boy, why don't you jump on in and say hi to brother Johnny? But he's got a, a, lot, of, a lot going on, probably a hangover. But he wanted, <laughs> he says, ask, tell Johnny to, to well, how, I got I even wrote it down, how much he loves me on, the, on your whole but, show. That's but, why I took a, a moment. Yeah, but I'll all. interrupt every once in a while. We'll talk about how much. And uh, I don't, I'm not joking. I do love all the guys and Jesse. It is like, it is like a family. And, uh, you know, from NU80, it's like, it's, it's not, a, it, it is a business idea. I mean, Ed and I have talked about it. It's like, man, do, do that. We all have things like i've got a studio behind me that's full fully ready to record for tracks we have utilized this for some for collective soul even which is exciting because that 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 because of ed and the guys like we have this remote setup now that legitimately works and it's like it's a dream come true i sometimes have to pinch myself that as a kid i'm like i wish i could have a drum room i could use all the time well now i do but pat of course like stuff like the deck needs repair or redoing a, a room in the house or so finding the balance of stuff is 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 tough but we're i'm proud of everything that's going on is my point i'm proud of the projects and all of them are work i mean the nua thing is not it's not just some joke it's we did it for fun but even it is work trying to get it all ready for this show so talent buyers can look at it and maybe buy it then plan what happens if i'm on the road with collective soul can there be a sub you get it so it is a business dude i applaud you you know that's what it's all about is live life 
live your dreams, fill it out, do whatever you need to do. And, and it, you take the risk, you know, what's the worst thing that could happen? There are others out there. So, yeah. And like you said, you're playing the cars, flock of seagulls. Again, you're, you're, you're doing something different to probably improve and keep your skill set up as a drummer. And uh, yeah, the fans would love it. I would definitely go see a show like that. I, I never saw a rock of ages, but I know people that have and said, my goodness, yeah. if you're a you know, fan of foreigner and all the, all the rock oh bands, my- you're going to, you're going to be out of your seat. You know, you, it's what we live for, but uh, good right. for you, Johnny. Yeah. And all the guys, I mean, Ed got the sweet tea and will, I mean, that's how I, I met will was I started playing surrogate drivers. I'm like, who is this guy? I don't will for, and I love it. And uh, the feedback that I got from playing, his tracks and uh you know dean uh, ghost and magnets and uh oh, hell yeah. you know you know J- jesse's always working with somebody out there so yeah i mean that's what that's what makes it you know again your your collector soul will always be collector soul but once in a while it's got to be i'm watching i'm doing more and more interviews with great artists like yourself that are in you know they form these super groups just to Try something different, which I get. And it, the, the killer part, Johnny, is that songs are just phenomenal. Again, I'm the I play new music. I can play every I played the hits all my life, but that's where yeah. I found my niche was, you know, I want to do something different. And that's my awesome. goodness, Johnny, I, I was getting 10 CDs a week. My male guy was like looking at me, going, What are you doing? And the hardest part is you know, trying to do my due diligence is listen to the album or the seat, the whole, the whole yeah. CD to find that track. You know, people are begging me and, you know, for me to hang out with you guys and Billy Gibbons and Alice Cooper and three doors down and cheap trick, because that's yeah. what musicians do. They create new music and sadly radio isn't what it was when we grew up, um, no. you know, my brother reminds me all the time. He's like, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't right. know half of this new music, which is You're sad. Awesome. I'm not going to, I'm not going to criticize Spotify and all that. You know, you guys get a million down, you know, streams and you make a dollar 50. I'm like, buy well, the album. So Johnny can sign it. You can't sign you, Spotify. You're right. I will tell you, thanks for doing what you do because we talk about that as NU80 and, and also spinning collective soul. It's like, you know, since I've been involved with the guys, it isn't the same in the sense of the radio and MTV and VH1. Yeah. And there's no anger towards that. It's just I sometimes miss that because there was a tangible. Everyone says this, but it's true. A tangible vinyl, tangible CD or a cassette tape. If you wanted to watch a concert, you got a VHS tape of Rush. You couldn't wait for the Rush live you know, VHS to come out, get it for Christmas. And I even find myself affected by the modern times that like, I don't buy music as much because it's rentable through these downloading uh, or streaming platforms. I do think it's amazing because the amount we can learn now, if you want to check something out, but I do think it's a mild shame too, because we, it isn't the same with bands getting signed and having to go into a a van and trailer or a car to tour and then lead to a bus, Uh, you know, and it, Collective Soul did all that. You know, I was not involved in the beginning, but I sure tried on my own with my own bands out of Nashville. And I was a fan of the Collective Soul. So I get it what it's like. I didn't quite hit like they did. And so to be able to be on this, you know, backswing of the band, to be able to be the drummer, it's awesome. It's always what I wanted to do. And man, they deserve it. And I I don't mean that like, I can't talk about it like we deserve it because I think they built it from the beginning. I didn't. So to be a part of it now and all the people that were in it, and the other drummers that I love to death, I just count, you know, I kind of pinch myself, like I said earlier. It's it's the, it's the what it's supposed to be. I don't question it. I'm psyched. I'm excited to hit the road coming up here in a few weeks, too, you know? It, it's such a family-oriented small group, and that's what I love about all of it. You guys have been so good to me, allowing me in your life after a show and hang out for 10 or 15 minutes to hug you guys and and, and then you put on the videos of you guys in the tour bus, and it's just a fun group of guys. I mean, yeah, I'm sure they're like a family that might be here or there, but you, when, I, when you guys post and have fun leaving a show on our way to another show, you know, Dean's wedding a surprise <laughs> or, or, or Jesse and Dean raiding you for your birthday, 
Just surprised when you answered the door, looking at your wife, going, "Is this really happening? What are you two characters doing here?" You know, and and to share that with fans like myself, you know, and that's what it's about, you know, and that's why I think, besides the music, people really love you guys as human beings because we get it, you know, and some, you know, I, I can't say every artist gives me five minutes. You know, I'm lucky to get to three minutes, but for you guys, I mean, I would, you know, I did, you know, talking about different risk, I came up with a dice game, as you, I'm sure Jesse and those guys told you. I want to we do were... something different, and Jesse yes. wins it. I mean, Adam, I, I mean, you thought we won the Super Bowl and the, and the World Series. I mean, Will really won it the first time we did it, and it rolled, the dice rolled off the table of Mohegan Sun, and he, I thought he was going to kick the bathroom door down. But the second time we did it, and Will says, let Jesse do it, and Jesse gets five of a kind. And, I remember uh, that. I it was that. so cool, and uh, it was just, I wanted, like I said, I wanted to do something different, and uh, the next week, I played the whole entire album, as promised, <laughs> of Blood, which yeah. I love, and yeah. uh, the minute I reach out to artists and say, hey, I got this got this cool game, five, Pat Calamari's five for it all, and oh my God, Johnny, to hang out with Paul Rogers of Bad Company, he had a 16-track live album, and I meet him down in Jones Beach, and he goes, give me the dice, <laughs> I mean, oh my goodness. I'm like so into cool. Paul Rogers dressing room, pinching myself yeah. over that. And he says, I can't thank you enough for keeping new music alive and doing what you do. And um You're yeah, man. I, I just can't get the smile off. But when people see my enthusiasm, it's it's really me because it's like just thinking of different things, like you said, different projects, taking on things. What's the worst that could happen? Somebody says, I, and I've had a manager go. No, my guys aren't going to roll no dice and you're going to videotape it. I go try to try to promote the new album. I would play every track whether they get it or funny. not. And the manager goes, absolutely not. So I go backstage and I meet the guys and they go, you're the dice guy. We're the dice. So we did it anyway. And uh, it, was just, it, it was just fun. Oh, Dude, you're goodness. hilarious. That's what you do. You got, you got to get backstage and talk to the actual, the band. Sometimes there is that safety net Meant for a reason, but in this case, harmless dice. You're trying to promote it. It's amazing. It takes 30 seconds. Yeah. We videotape. I mean, Billy Gibbons pulls out his own dice. Alice Cooper says, where's the dice? Let's do this. I mean, the three doors down guy. I mean, every band. I I think I've been turned down maybe once or twice. But And I just laugh. It's like, whatever. I'm not yeah. trying. Well, you mentioned MTV. I was... I was starting to uh, do Squid TV because I miss MTV. And uh, it gives me an outlet to play the videos of the new songs. But I ran yep. into so many roadblocks about copyright infringements oh. and the labels and the this and the that. And I'm like, no, I don't want, I'm not making money. I want to tell you how much I love the new track of, you know, Johnny Rabs and, and, and you 80. And this yeah. is the track. And here's the video. That's it, you know, just to get more more views, to get more people to look at it and see it. Because, right. you know, like a video could go viral compared to radio anymore. So I'm like, why you're, not? You're, you have the right idea, Pat. I, I Some of the things with uh, how you're doing this, I've, you know, talked about doing a drum show as well that just talks about, you know, there's a lot of people getting major views, but like un, unseen drummers or just like, hey, here, what, what questions might you have about like the reality of a pro drum career? I'm with you. That's awesome that you do that and that you, 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 I love that you're playing music and, oh, it's just, I got my vinyl collection over there. Ed's helped me rebuild some of my collection since the, the big old divorce, my fault. I left most of the stuff, but you know what I mean? He's, he's been a, a instrumental in helping me get my stuff. I lost, uh, out of, out of just <laughs> getting out of there pretty quick. Uh, <laughs> I, I can laugh at it now. I can laugh at it now, but the vinyl thing and just music to me and, I have a lot of little trinkets in the studio, too, that kind of uh, modeled after Ed's studio because they're reminders. You know, they're a reminder. He might have got some at the airport, a little statue, and it's just a reminder of the moment. So I'm a big, tangible guy. So, you know, nu is plan on doing vinyl. I know Collective Soul does vinyl. It, it, I'm telling you, it's like it's a pretty fun, healthy thing that's going on with life right now. And I try to not forget that when I do get a little down, if we're off the road too long, or I don't feel productive. I don't, I don't, I love being home, but if I'm not productive, I will beat myself up. I'm, I'm always trying to do something, 
you know, you, and- you have this knack as um, an educator, and I enjoy just watching you go and show the free hand or show this or show that. And I think that's great. I don't think there's enough people that take the time. And uh, today you go to YouTube. I mean, I grabbed a guitar one day. I told my buddy, uh, he's yeah. a musician out of uh, Muscle Shoals. And I said, guess what I did today? And I was like, anything else, John, Johnny, you know, practice. I can learn how to play drums if I practice. I grabbed a guitar and I did Smoke on the Water, like the, the, the five, you know, da, da, da. and I'm like, yep. he's like, okay, so now you got to finish the song. But I'm doing so much. You know, my fan, my, you know, you mentioned we just redid the living room. We just redid the kitchen. I painted Dude. all the cabinets. I got the driveway blacktop. I'm retired Dude. now. I'm doing the musical thing. I'm interviewing yesterday, Jeff Scott Soto. Today, you, Edgar Winter tomorrow, Mark nice. Stein from Vanilla Fudge. Um, I mean, the phone never stops ringing. So I, I, I'm living my dream I'm as glad. well as. Uh, I'm really Glad to hear that. I am. I am. And be careful. We all got to be careful on those extra projects. We got the kitchen ripped up right now. And I did not realize how those bills can stack up, stack up from having to eat out every dang night. We, we love eating food out, but like, man, the kitchen is just sitting there empty. I'm like, you get it. You get it. First world problems, Pat. Yeah. Now <laughs> for family, family always first, you know, you mentioned music and I think about this whole lockdown and I said to Jeff Scott Soto yesterday, I, I can't even watch the news. I think of the poor people in U- Ukraine. And I go, yeah. you know, I go to a show. It could be anybody. I could be 100,000 people in the stadium. And we're one family. And I don't care what color they are. I don't care what political party yeah. they are. We're there and we enjoy. We're singing back the song. And why can't that just expand into life? Because if I'm having a bad day, I put on Collector Soul. I think of you guys, and I just, you know, you know, I just can't get the smile off my face. And today, people are just—it's like the world is like, what? I'm like, come on, I, man. But my Pat, my theory, you know, my theory does not work. But like, I have this one song called "Questions Never Asked," and it's a dumb, dumb thing. Like, would you get off your ass if the cable went out? All these questions, and then it, it, one of the thing, one of the lines is. It just goes, why do people kill each other? And that's the, and it just stops. And then it goes on to the course. My point is, that's been my big question. And we, I don't think we can solve that. Uh, I'm not trying to throw any political yeah, thing. No. Why do people hurt or kill each other? I, I guess we can go down a deep, dark hole of why. I get it. But just that's always been my philosophical, like, okay, I, I don't want to hurt anybody. I just, no. <laughs> No, I, I don't want to. I don't want to even want to be near anybody negative. I want to have a good time. Look, life yeah. is too short. If I can't enjoy myself, if I can't put a smile and get somebody to laugh and have a good time, what 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 are what are we doing, Johnny? Right. Who who are your influences? I say you said you read Carmine's book. Were you a Buddy Rich guy? Were you a jazz guy? A Gene Krupa? Who were you uh, looking at when you got behind the kit? When I first started, uh, it was. Um, Weird thing, but a camping trip, a buddy, those old cassette recorders that are mono cassette recorders, those flat ones, he had Rush exit stage left, and he played the drum solo from YYZ, and I was like, are those all three of the dudes playing that? And he's like, no, that's just Neil. I'm like, no way. So that was third grade, second grade, and I got into Rush very heavily, and because there was no videos, I had to imagine what it looked like, and that was my favorite thing, is imagining what the hell this looked like, you know? So Neil was like one of the first rock you know, type fusion, prog rock, and still so bummed out when he passed away. Unbelievable loss. But then that led to Alan White from Yes and Bill Bruford, and then to fusion and funk, big time funk and fusion. I'm more into fusion and funk than I am like straight ahead jazz. However, yes, I did do Elvin Jones and all the, you know, things with like Steve Gadd for like the funk jazzy. But all the guys like Greg Bissonette, especially when Greg was in Maynard Ferguson's band, but then when he did uh, and I know Greg really well now, but I don't think he still understands the influence influence he had on me when he did Eat Him and Smile and the way that Roth like made that whole stage wacky and the powder coated. He basically made the drums a showpiece, like black with white powder coated hardware. Never been seen by me, at least. And those guys, Steve Smith is really good friend of mine now from Journey. But I like Steve more for his vital information fusion days. I just interviewed him as well, like we're doing, and he is my biggest influence. He is like the world's best 
in my opinion, at improving. But then you got Omar Hakeem, Steve Jordan. You can imagine being a drummer's drummer. The influences for me continue to this day on 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 people. So, but that's where I started was like the Rush thing, and and yes, and then also the '80s pop, Thomas Dolby, Cars, Devo, huge Devo fan. Um, it just it, it's Huey Lewis. I mean, it's 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 Tower Power, crazy gamut. Um, and my last thing I want to admit is, I find myself going back down those paths more than listening to totally new music um and it's kind of a mistake i'm kind of being closed-minded and i need to open that up a little bit more but it's been difficult as you just said earlier i'm used to tangible records or stuff i've grew up with robbie robertson it's just it's endless uh, my god robbie Robertson, the band i love the band uh -oh. are you kidding me yeah i mean i i learned from my i got two uh young adults they're in their 30s i'm a dinosaur and um, they, they've opened my eyes to a lot. I mean, today is all about hip hop. And I did not want to, I'm like, no, 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 I'm a rock blues guy. I love jazz. I love going to New Orleans. I love going to Chicago. I love going to any club yep. and just hanging out and hearing the music and really taking it in. But when I see yep. a Post Malone hanging out with Ozzy Osbourne, coming up with an album, I'm going, well, maybe I need to open up my eyes. Maybe I need to, you know, it doesn't have to be I love it. But maybe there is something there that I'm missing that I can learn from. So, you know, yeah, yeah no, yeah. Well, because go ahead, Johnny. Oh, I was just gonna say, don't don't forget. I didn't know what was happening, and you might not have either. But that whole breakthrough when Run DMC and Aerosmith did the remake of Walk This Way, I was totally yeah. confused. I didn't even think I didn't think anything of it except for it was a collaboration as a kid. But then later, when you see these documentaries, you're like, that totally invented that barrier breaking down of rap meets rock or you know, so maybe that's like the Post Malone uh, Aussie. That, go for it, guys. Well, Do I it. always, you know, I get it. Um, we added this tagline, classic rock redefined. Redefined meaning we can play whatever we want. We yeah. create our own playlist. And who cares if you cross genres? I mean, yeah. look, it all started from the blues as far as I'm concerned. And it right. expanded to wherever we were at. So. It's like, you know, I have no, I, if I want to play Johnny Cash, I'm playing Johnny Cash. If Love I want it. to play, you know, Waylon Jennings or Tanya Tucker, I, uh, you know, as long as it's a, it's a new track, you know, if I could throw an old one in there, why not? So it's all, right. it's all I good. It. I, I want to, I got to mention Johnny just came out last uh, week on Twitter, Collector Soul celebrating the 25th anniversary of Discipline Breakdown album, and uh, awesome. which is really great. And uh, I see that there is going to be, where's my notes I just had before, um, newly remastered audio deluxe two CD digital anniversary edition, yeah. which comes out on June 17th. So please, I know all the Collector Souls, when I tag Collector Soul and everybody to this video to, uh, later on today, I know everybody's going to go out and buy it. I mean, everybody, awesome. the, the fans that I know, the core fans that I know that follow this great band, bye, bye, bye. They, nobody's, I mean, a download, like I said, is great, but you know, everybody, uh, everybody buys. I tried to get Will on today. I don't know. He never really answered me, but uh, I said, hey, we got to, uh, we do, I'm doing this thing with Johnny today. So I, I, I missed the heck out of you guys. I tell you, I miss, I, I miss, I miss the fun. Uh, that that uh, the excitement. I, I get Will's shooting picks at me, hit me in the forehead. Jesse's <laughs> jumping on down, looking at me. Uh, Ed is smiling from ear to ear. Dean, I'm usually in front of Jesse. I never get on for some reason. I never made it to Dean's side of the stage. I got to do that once in a while. I love <laughs> Dino, but uh, yeah, I'm always I'm always in front of Jesse. It seems and between him and uh, Will, forget about it. It's a it's a different dynamic. I'm proud of those guys. I mean, my quick thing is, and, and they probably get worn out on me saying it, but I do feel like I'm in the band with them, but good for them on the 25th anniversary. Good for them on everything. They did it from the beginning. I am a fan. I'm in the band, but I, I'm a fan and I was a fan. I was a fan. So like when I see these, some of these releases, I'm like, yeah, I'm a, can I get one too? Can I buy one? <laughs> so it's like, I get to play those tunes with these guys. And I, it's, it's a nice feeling of, doing what they've done in the past, their hits and like the future, what I think are hits we've, we've worked on with blood and like, you know, new records coming out in the future. Like it is a cool spot. And there's not one night that goes by that. I don't look, look around and go, man, these guys are my extended family and brothers, but like, how the hell am I in a band with these guys? Shit. And it's cool. I like it. 
I and you, I just looked before you were in the band for what the last ten years, right? It's been at least ten yeah, years. This the, yeah, this is the eleventh touring cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it looks like you've been in the band since I've found this. I mean, I've known the band. I know the music. It, it's you know, it would drive me crazy. No, no crap, to Johnny. Every time Collector Soul would play in my neighborhood, Pat's on yeah. a cruise, Pat's at Myrtle Beach. Pat's on vacation, and I'm like, they're in my backyard. I and I, and I, I know. finally, you know, broke the ice, and now it's like I'm seeing these guys every time you go. I did see the video of, and you never know when Ed's going to throw a curveball. Come on, Johnny, sing a song, and here you do Billy Joel's "Still Rock and Roll." <laughs> that was so you know, cool. Well, it was fun as hell that thing because that was one of those things where I'm not going to, I can't even pretend. I literally was like, should I? I know what he's doing. I know what chord progression he's doing. And he goes, Any, anybody want to want to sing? And everyone's all, no. And it's not that they didn't know. I, Will's a mother of singer. Jesse sings. Dean can sing. We all, I don't really, I love singing, but I'm not like some front man, right? So I'm like, I totally want to screw around on this. And I, I didn't even know if I did that, if Ed was going to be like, what were you doing? But he didn't. And he was, he that's still, I found that the other week, right? You're right. I reposted it. That thing, to me, that sums up the fun that we we can have out there. It's, it's, that was unplanned. You know, I didn't know the, know all the words off, the, you know, off by, uh, you know, in my mind, but I was like, screw it. Let's just, and I love that. There's some spontaneity every night. There is. So we have a plan, but we try to keep that show, you know, active and, and fun. Like just, we like Ed said, let's just go rock. Let's play live. Like the, all the guys, let's. You know, Will calls it, we're creating vibrations. We're creating uh, air. We're moving air. It's, you know, we got to, it's a feeling, you know? So not one moment on that stage are we are we just sitting there comfy going, ah, let's just play. Not one. We're always trying to bring it every time. And, and the end would run and to see you guys just huddle and it just yeah. puts the final pieces. It's like, you know, you're hugging each other. It's a brotherhood. It's a family. And now it's time to we rock the place. The place is going crazy, and uh, now it's time to have a cold one and relax. And uh, you, you cool. high five and said, "Okay, we we you know the good Lord allowed us to uh, to, to satisfy another you know group of people out there that went home with smiling like I do. You know whether it's a two hour ride, I go home smiling. I'm like." My wife's like, I sneak into bed because I don't want to wake her up. And, but she's usually awake. And I go, you should have seen it. No, tell me tomorrow. I got to get up in you know, three hours. And I'm like, okay. So, Pat, I'm okay. glad to hear that you have that same thing happen. I, I thought, I'm glad I'm not alone. I'm just <laughs> sneaking in. <laughs> she's like, why are, you, why are you driving them guys crazy? They're going to be tired of looking at you showing up to a show. Nope. And I go. We love it. Jesse says, look, your family. Will says, "You're doing. We're going to get you on a tour bus one of these days." I, I, yeah. I know Vince. I know for now. I'm like, you know, it's like it's crazy. I, 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 and I don't. I can't say that for every band, but it's 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 all good, Johnny. I can't. Uh, I'm taking enough of your time. Awesome. And uh, is there anything, uh, any other projects that I can help promote? You, you got the NU80 that I'm definitely going to check out, and I encourage everybody to check out. You mentioned uh, the guys are working on another album. I think Will told you, said, it's interesting that you said we're vibrating noise. I think Will was saying to me the last time I talked to him that another album was coming out calling Vibrating. Um, I, I don't know where that is or what that happened was, with that. No, I, 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 very <laughs> soon I hope that that's released, and that, that kind of Ed was – kicking that around. And, and I mean, that literally was a separate conversation. Those guys always are coming up with ideas, but you know, Will's take on like, just like we're moving air, we're, we're causing, we're, they're all vibrations in the air that we're doing. Like we're, we're making, and it's true. We're, if we don't do anything, the crowd's going to be like, what are you guys doing? So I, it is pretty magical to me that we're, you know, five dudes up there making energy that then we get energy back from the crowd. So uh, we're excited. I'll tell you what, I can see behind you, you know, the Switchfoot Collective Soul Tour. Uh, give me a break with how awesome that's going to be. I think that we're all ready. I talked to Ed yesterday on the phone. We're ready to, to play and we love our families and homes, but it is, they all understand what we do and we're going to get out there and it's time to, uh, you know, as it says, it says it's about music. It is, and it's about time to get out there and get this back on track. We, we love the fans. And we're going to have a great summer. And I mean, that to me, that's what to keep an eye out for folks. You know, I'm, I'm, 
ready to get back out there with Collective Soul, and that's the main thing here. So we're we're pumped. I'm blocking half the dates, but go to collectivesoul.com, check out the dates. This tour says uh, starts July 15th, but I know you guys are on the road. I want to say May 20th down in uh, Richardson, Texas. So yeah. all good. I'm going to catch you in New York on August 3rd in Long Island um, at the Paramount, and then August 4th um, in Times Square at the Palladium, which is going to be oh. a fun show. Oh, baby, fasten your seatbelts. We always, my wife and I always go to Hampton Beach, New, New Hampshire. And she's like, how come we don't set the vacation around Collective Souls date? I said, I don't, I don't know. And I'm like, you know, you tell me one minute I'm, I'm driving these poor guys crazy. And now you're telling me we got to go on vacation around, around these guys. I said, well, well, I, I see them enough. I catch up to them enough. Johnny, I hope you enjoyed the conversation as much as I have. It's been a blast, man. And I've learned so much. Congratulations on not just being an educator, a drummer, an innovator, an inventor, a guy taking risk, and a guy that fits in perfectly with these four amazing guys behind me. Holy crap, man. A dream come true, right? Yeah, and it means a lot. Thanks for having me on here, and I, I can't wait to see you and your wife and whoever else you're going to bring out. <laughs> I love what you're doing, and um, thanks for supporting everyone the collective soul and just all of us and it's an honor to be on here so thank you buddy thank you hey it doesn't get any better than this man the cool drum a great drummer i should say a great musician he ha he does it all check it all out please do and catch these guys on tour all right here on pat sound bites in conjunction with wbxo classic rock redefined who plays new music like collective soul blood ride as rain go get it today <laughs>